Cool. So thanks ever so much for joining us. Uh, and I'm joined on stage to talk about the trend, some would call a mega trend, of commerce media. Um, while commerce media and TV isn't new, uh, it's been around since the origins of the soap opera, um, what we are seeing is a huge increase in the data availability and how consumers watch, and then how the uh, content is made available to be watched, which means there's more data available to be connected. Um, what we want to do today is go behind the hype, look at what that promised value may give, and talk about how we actually do it. So I'm delighted that working here for LiveRamp, a data platform which helps with collaboration, um, and I've been told by our marketing team not to talk about LiveRamp or technology, that I should go straight into the introductions of two experts in the fields of both retail and connected media, which is Ollie and Adam. So Ollie, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you very much, Will. Yeah, so uh, I think it's good afternoon. Yeah, it's good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm Ollie Shaw. I'm the Omni Media Director at Boots. Uh, so in my role, I look after both sides of uh, Boots' media. I look after Boots' own media investment. I also run Boots Media Group, which is our retail media group. And good afternoon. I'm Adam Thomas. I'm Sky Media's Head of Data Solutions. So my job is making sure we've got the right data um, in the right place and that we can use it to help advertisers like Oli. Well, we've had a brilliant uh, morning already um, and it's kind of been introduced by how to reach people, how to make sure that you've got broad reach across consumers to drive results, coming from Peter saying how well we should use TV. Uh, Dan Cowlin's just been on talking about the importance of effectiveness and outcomes and what we want to be able to go through is how from that huge menu, that big wish list of cross-green collaboration, how to link that deterministic data to outcomes, how can we bring it all together. Um, and when we look into that, we want to look at how that can actually be done. So, Adam, you work with Sky across multiple brands, multiple retailers. What actually is happening to um, kind of see that huge growth of those retailers and now those retail media arms? How are they connecting their data to media data? Okay, I think the first thing that's happening is data is available. I think that's the first and foremost. And uh, the technology helps that availability um, actually be placed into action. So in Sky's world, we're operating with viewing data. Um, obviously, in Ollie's world, he's got the, the retail purchase data. And fundamentally, what we're trying to do is break that into four areas of use. So insight generation, planning for campaigns, activating campaigns, and then the measurement piece again. So it just got mentioned five minutes ago, measuring outcomes. So fundamentally, we want to ensure that whatever advertising all he's putting out there, he's getting the maximum value from that, and obviously measuring that is, is a key key component. So I think those are the headlines from our perspective. Thanks. And Oli, from your side? Yeah, I mean, uh, I really agree. I agree. Strange enough, I agree with that. <laughs> um, so uh, I think from our side, the, from a retailer's perspective, it's probably the technology has been a great enabler. So obviously retailers have had really strong data for quite a long time. Uh, Boots has obviously got a very strong data in the Advantage card, so 16 million customers in the UK. Um, but I think what we've seen over the kind of last sort of two and a half, three years is that uh, the technology has enabled us to utilize that data more effectively than ever before. So uh, probably two and a half years ago, we were using about 6% of our first party data in our media. Today, it's about 60%. So it's really enabled it to accelerate quite rapidly. And I think to Adam's point, what that enables is the ability to target audiences, but it equally also allows more critically the measurement and the kind of measurement in the kind of on and offline space for retailers, which is critical. So um, I think it's been quite a significant evolution probably over the last few years. I think it's really interesting listening to um, the talk just before talking about uh, how important it is about measuring not just the short but the long-term impact. And actually that's what it gives us as well as I think understanding at a customer level means you can measure that short-term impact, but it also allows you to measure that long-term impact as well. Great. So those changing consumer uh, touch points, those cons the way that we're delivering TV is helping people kind of focus in on getting more of those data points. And that connects across all media. Now, if we really focus on the TV, how is collaboration specifically on TV um, being fueled? And are we able to connect some of that TV viewing data to other channels, or how does it affect those other channels? And Ollie, I think this is a good one for you based on your, your current title. 
Yes, uh, so I think it's a really critical part of what we're doing. So for us, the really key part is that now the ability to kind of understand and activate the data from a first party perspective has become something that we've done with Sky for a number of years and a number of other partners. So we've worked in that space to activate it. I think the really exciting space that we're moving into now, and I think Adam was just touching on it before, is actually it's not just about the activation, the measurement and the understanding. It's actually about how you connect that data earlier to insight. So, you know, previously, you know, traditional linear TV, which obviously Boots is a very big partner, big, we utilize quite extensively. Um, you would look at the measurement of that over a much longer period of time. You probably use econometrics, you probably use other measurement tools. But actually now with the kind of advent of the connectivity of the data together, what we're able to see is not only what's effective now from a kind of top line performance, but also things like what creative is working well at what time, uh, on what channels, uh, and then equally make that changes much more rapidly. So rather than sort of having a campaign that you start and don't change, what it gives you is that flexibility that you haven't had previously. So I suppose it's a bit more of that kind of looking under the hood that lets you understand a bit more of what should be happening and probably allows you to be a bit more flexible in your decisioning on it. Cool, and if, if Ollie's looking at that extra flexibility and how to make those decisions, Adam, how, how is it working from your side? I, I was just checking he's ticked most of them off. I think, <laughs> um, I, I think from, from our perspective, it's, it's been about driving the scale, because if you're bringing two data sets together, it's largely about that piece in the middle uh, and the scale of that. I hear a lot of people talk about match rate percentages, and it's, it's largely around what is that volume of the audience. Um, in terms of bringing channels together, Sky's done a lot of this work around C-Flight. Hopefully everyone's heard of that. If not, please do ask later. Um, but C-Flight is bringing together multiple data sets to measure campaigns um, so that you're able to see a deduplicated impact. Um, I think the other thing that's, um, that's been important over the last few years of bringing the first party data together is that ability to target geographies and specific segments of customers, be those lapsed audiences or audiences that you're trying to activate for specific purposes. So I think it's bringing those together and it's the very, very specific outcomes that just simply weren't possible before. I think those are probably the key things for me. And so now we're kind of drilling further and further into how you're using the data or how the data can be used. Can we go into a little bit more depth about what you guys are specifically doing together? What are some of the relationships that you've built through data collaboration that you're currently executing on now or hope to execute on in the future between Boots and Sky? And Ollie, I think I'll push that one to you again. Sure. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, we've worked very closely with Sky. I think we've had a, a kind of data sharing partnership with them for about eight years. Uh, Adam and I have worked quite closely over the last few years, even more closely. So we're activating kind of Boots' data within AdSmart for uh, both for, um, for Boots, but also for our retail media group. Uh, I think what's exciting for us is the collaboration between those two data sets. I think to Adam's point previously, that wasn't really possible for us to do that. Uh, and we've seen really, really strong performance. So we've seen really significant uplift uh, from the activity that we're running uh, above and beyond what we can do, what we would have seen normally. So I think those things are the, probably the most critical things for me. For me, I think the most critical thing is being able to work with a partner who shares the same philosophy around the data. I think if you're trying to collaborate where you don't get the philosophy aligned first up, it's hard. I think overall data is easy to say, but really hard to do. Mm. Um, I think if you get that philosophy right first and you're clear on what it is you're trying to drive for, then focus in on, on those very specifics. Don't, don't try and do everything all at once. I think that's how our relationship has evolved really from starting off with things like AdSmart, moving on to the first party data, driving the measurement, and then looking at what comes next around linear planning and insight, uh, and trying to effectively move to a situation where we're able to share exactly what Boots customers are watching on TV. I think that's the, the next big thing for us, but it's that philosophy, I think. Yeah, I agree, agree. I think um, Amanda and I have talked a lot about it. We talk a lot. I think, it, to his point, it's not easy. Like it's not, and I think it's the partnership and the collaboration and the philosophy between two organizations that want to do it uh, now with the technology to enable it that's made it much, much more easy for us to have the conversation. But it's still not easy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but. And that's great here. So the, the data enables you guys to work closer together. You can start to see those business outcomes. You can start to kind of measure those metrics that matter to both of you. But when we kind of look at the consumer side of the equation, how is the data that we kind of see derived from the viewership data or from the, retail, uh, from the retailer, how is that use of data kind of really fueling the personalization, the customer experience? What are we doing to make the customer experience better from using the data? 
Yeah. Ollie, I think this, this is definitely one for you. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, personalization is kind of an expectation. I'm not sure. I'm sure we all have experienced Black Friday recently, uh, and you open up your inbox to all of these people that you never knew that you previously subscribed to uh, and received tons of emails from them. I think the, the key thing is in that world where you, where, where you are getting, there's so many messages that customers are getting, I think, there's an expectation from them around personalization. There's lots of research that's been done in that space. I think it's about 75% of customers expect uh, that they will have personalized communications from a partner. Um, and we see it in our own data, so we see the, the effect when it's not personalized. The key thing for us, we measure the kind of effect of non-personalized versus personalized, and that's like test and control. And the uplift is really significant because you're giving customers what they want and what they're telling you with their data for it. And it's that exchange that they give you, the value exchange that comes with that, that has been really valuable. So I think for us, it gives us the ability to give customers what they want, which gives them the value back. I think equally also for us, it allows us to tailor the creative and the messaging and those elements together with it. So uh, for us, it's hugely valuable and it definitely delivers the returns for us as well. Cool. Okay. So we're hearing the value from that personalized experience. So Adam, how are you helping deliver that for Boots and any other client you work with? If, if that's the, what we're trying to do, the, the how really is about assembling all of those data sets very, very quickly. And that's got to be done on a, a, an overnight basis so it's ready to go the next day. Um, if we're trying to deliver planning, insight, activation, and, and measurement, for, for us, because we won't ever say, here's all of our data and vice versa, mm. it, it's about having a, a space that's safe, number one. And this is what, what LiveRamps provided for us, but also an environment that enables those activities straight out of the box. Because I think if you're trying to develop this stuff, again, it's just very, very hard. It's hard to do. So for us, it's getting the right data there consistently so that whenever we've got this call to say, okay, what's next? Where do we plan the next campaign? That's possible. It's just about making sure it's always on. Um, and again, sounds easy to do and it's easy to say. Mm. It's just hard. It's hard, hard <laughs> yards to, to deliver. The space we've landed in, though, um, so far is great because we're, we're moving on to you know, what comes next. Yeah. And, and I think that's the exciting part. So I think the activation part that we worked on together has been really fantastic and we've seen the benefits from it. So I think when we sat down and talked about it, we're, the key thing for us is, all right, well, how do we extend that beyond a uh, kind of digital space and CTV space into the linear space and how can we connect our data sets together to effectively understand exposure uh, in a linear environment through Sky with Boots data to really begin to understand the effectiveness of that. Uh, and so that's something that we've worked on really closely together uh, probably over the last few months and I think is something that we hope will bring real fruit for us from a performance perspective and again allows us that ability to understand, plan, build the audience and then target from it and learn from it quickly. Uh, and then also understand that kind of closed loop measurement on it. So um, yeah, a lot more to come in that, but I think it's, it, I think it's just, it's taking that philosophy of data sharing into the next level and looking at all the problems and opportunities that we might have and how we can extend that into that space. Brilliant. And it sounds like you guys are already doing a lot through data collaboration, some of it complex, none of it easy enough. So if we were going to ask on the Christmas list for collaboration this year, what would it be? What would you like to see from the future through data collaboration? And I'll go for Ollie again first on this one. Okay. Um, well, I suppose a bit of the theme we've talked about. I think, um, interestingly, when we started the process, it's not, I think we touched on it, it's not easy to take data sets together. Even, even now, it's not as easy as it would be, as we would, would, would like to. I think the key thing for me is about how we can make it easy to understand for people and give access to, um, at scale in a safe way to people to, to utilize it. So one of my, uh, other than to make it much easier, uh, uh, is probably around uh, the way in which we can visualize that and showcase that to, um, and make it easy for people to get access to that data and to understand it. I think the key thing for me is data is amazing, but it needs to be actionable. It needs to deliver an insight from it. Otherwise, it's just great data. So we have great data, but unless it combines together to give that actionable insight. And I think the way in which we can surface those actionable insights more easily uh, is still something I'd love for Christmas. So uh, <laughs> I think we probably want the both the same thing yeah. then, really. Um, I think I just probably want it faster. <laughs> I want it faster and cheaper. I think that's, that's the thing. So you get it quicker and cheaper, it, it enables more things to be done. Because I think a, a lot of the time with the data cost, the, the return gets, gets harder sometimes. So I think I, I completely echo the, how do we explain this simply? Because I think it, because it is hard, even if you make it easier, it's still quite difficult. 
So I think if we can get to easy to understand explanations that are, that are talking people's language in terms of what they're trying to achieve, it's quicker and it's cheaper. I, I, that would be an amazing set of Christmas presents. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Cool. So it looks like we've got something fairly easy to deliver, which is uh, really complex data sets, bring them together to collaborate across multiple screen experiences, linear, digital, and further interconnected bits. And now we just need to make that easier to see, easier to stand, and quicker and cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks ever so much, That's guys. It. And no, we'll, 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 we'll work hard on that one for the yeah. year ahead. I, I think the, the one thing I would sort of finish on is also to say that the speed of uh, the ability to do things, I mean, has accelerated so much over the last kind of three years. So the things that we would have wanted to do three years ago that we can do today has got so much faster. So there is hope. Maybe not for Christmas, or <laughs> but for, for anything in the future. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.